everyone to um, our Crocker Kingsley virtual reception. Uh, we are very excited to have all of you here with us. Um, sadly, you know, we wish that we could meet in the gallery, but um, during the COVID times, we're excited to um, be able to share an event like this um, virtually. So um, just a quick introduction. My name is Mary Tess Mayall, and I am the co-director at Blue Line Arts. And um, uh, Brooke Abrams, uh, the other co-director at Blue Line Arts, um, is going to introduce um, Nancy Lawrence for you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today for the introductions. Um, we just feel um, so honored to be the venue that is hosting um, the Crocker Kingsley competition this year, and I think for its last three iterations. And uh, the Kingsley Art Club has um, just an amazing tradition here with this show. And here to tell you more about that is Nancy Lawrence, who is the co-president of the Kingsley Art Club. Hello. Yes, I'm co-president of the Kingsley with um, my friend and co-president Pam Salzenberger, who is here in the chat room. Um, we are so pleased to see this very large Crocker Kingsley show. Part of what happened, of course, is that um, the show has been expanded to a national audience so that we have people from outside of California now in the show. But we're very pleased with the quality of the work. And as you can see from the, this picture of the gallery, there's a lot of color and light in this particular show. The Kingsley, I always say this, um, 1892 is when we started with a group of women. In 1926, they started to show their work at the Crocker Art Gallery before it was a museum. And then in, starting in 1940, the show was juried as it has continued. Um, the show was annual generally, and then it became a biannual show once it became the Crocker Kingsley. And so we are at the 80th show in spite of this long tradition. Um, we have a strong relationship with the Crocker. We've always met there. And we are so very happy that these works, some of them will be showing at the Crocker and we will get a chance to share these wonderful things with the people at Blue Line because uh, the two directors have been so helpful to us. They have carried things out. They have worked on this. They've made it work in a very difficult time. We were a little bit leery when we thought, oh, this might have to be all virtual. And we're so happy that we have a real show, that we get to see everything. So you can come to Blue Line in Roseville and experience the show live. As you know, all art looks better in person, but all of this looks pretty good here. So without further comments from me, let's go ahead with our awards and announcements. Great, thank you so much, Nancy. Mm -hmm. And um, on behalf of Blue Line Arts, I just want to um, say thank you so much to the Kingsley Art Club for their collaboration and support and to the Crocker Art Museum. Um, real quick, I'd like to say a few words about this year's juror, Carrie Letterer. Um, she is um, an artist and independent curator um, and she has been a curator at the Bedford Gallery in Walnut Creek for over 20 years. Uh, we were honored to have her make all of the selections for the show, as well as the prizes. And um, I just want to share um, a couple of words. She put together a beautiful juror statement and letter um, that Brooke will share a, um, a link to in the chat. But um, in Carrie's words here, she says, the enormous variety of artworks in the Crocker Kingsley exhibition is a celebration of our universal human response and the wonders of our daily lives. It is also a testament to human creativity as an avenue for the expression of powerful ideas and feelings. And for all of you who have seen this show in, in, um, in person, um, the variety and caliber of the work is um, absolutely stunning. So we are very excited to um, have this show and to um, announce the awards and selections today. And uh, here with us today to um, help announce uh, the juror selections for the show is uh, past president of Blue Line Arts, Eric McIntosh. And uh, Eric is still serving on our board today as I think one of the longest serving board members that we have. And uh, his company, Wizix Technology Inc., 
is um, a sponsor of this year's exhibition and has graciously um, put up some money towards the cash awards for the artists. Um, so with that, Eric, um, I'll let you take it away. Awesome. Well, yes, thank you very much, Brooke. And it's always a pleasure to, to be part of this Paramount event for Blue Lion and the community. Um, yeah, Wizix, we are a, a local office technology company. And as much as I don't want to bore you with that, we really do in, uh, enjoy our work with Blue Line and, and seeing what Blue Line does with this event and their Crocker Kingsley. So it's really a pleasure to be a part of it, Brooke. Thank you. All right. And um, that being said, um, would you like to let us know who the um, honorable mentions are for the juror selections or? Oh, Brooke, you know what? I, I apologize. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead? I was prepared, prepared to have that handle out those, but thank you. Okay, great. Just, yeah, I wanted to give you guys some extra screen time, um, but I am happy to um, announce uh, the juror selections um, from Carrie Letter. And first up, I'll let you know the honorable mentions. Uh, first up is Oscar Romero, want to go home with Armadillo. It's oil on canvas. It's a nice little piece in the West Park Gallery. Next up is Donna Dangit, self-study in garden. Next honorable mention is Marisa White, number nine. Next honorable mention is Kristen Braun, Freely Without Control, oil on panel. And the last honorable mention is David Avery, Encore, hard ground etching. Congratulations. So thank you for um, all of the honorable mention artists who participated. I'm going to go on to um, the fifth place um, award winner. And when I call your name, you'll have one minute to talk about your work. Yucho Guo, The Miraculous Rain. And Yu Chao, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, yes, hello. Uh, thank you to everyone for awarding me with this honor. Um, it is my first in-person exhibition and I'm very excited to be exhibited alongside all these amazing artists. Um, so when I made this painting, I was thinking about depicting a scene of miracle. And I was thinking about the idea of miracle being an event that's otherwise banal, but people see it as miracle because it contradicts with our understanding of the reality at hand. And I was thinking about the idea of rain, how Rainfall can be otherwise such an everyday occurrence, but to different people, and in this case, these people who are waist deep in water, um, I think each viewer will have their own interpretation of how these people's desire or despair are pushing them towards, you know, imagining the rain for bringing them the miracle. So that's where the idea came from. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing about your piece. Um, it, it really is splendid. I hope that you all get a chance to check it out in person. Um, next, we'll announce the fourth place juried prize winner, Peter Coom with Blue Bell. Peter, would you like to share with us? Thank you very much. I'm very pleased. Um, I appropriate um, a lot of uh, my imagery off, off the internet. Tumblr and things like that. I came across this guy and thought, wow, he's so interesting looking. Uh, his last name is Bell. If you go to my Instagram, you'll, you'll, you'll see the provenance. Um, but uh, my work, I, I like my work to be seen in person because it changes as you walk by uh, and light plays a great role. Uh, there's a point where you look at it where you're not seeing actual physical color, you're seeing color that uh, reflected color and it sort of fills channels spaces between the discs normally i have the color facing away from the viewer but the last few i've been doing it where the color faces you but it still reflects when you when you're standing to the oh god when you're standing to the left of it i think i don't know i get very dyslexic here but anyway um it's a pleasure i'm so happy you guys thank you and i, I love the way uh, whoever is in charge of instagram they uh, presented, I think, one of the first two posts for this exhibition. Uh, uh, my post was next to Ryan Carrington's flag number 20. And the two together, it just really felt like America today, you know? 
the blue collar folk that are having a hard time, the small businesses, you know, like Americana, the root of America that, that, that makes this country what it is. So whoever did that, I just love it. And I actually ended up posting it like it appears in those two posts. I put both Ryan's work and mine next to each other, you know? Anyway, so just a quick, another quick little thing. My art is kind of expensive, but it's very labor intensive. So I just want to offer people a chance to get in on the Peter Coon thing. I've, am I on screen here? Am I holding this up to you? Yes, yes you are. <laughs> Instead of Campbell's, this says Coombo's. And the little dot that covers the medallion, uh, in each can, they're a different color. So it's a unique, they're, they're all unique. And it actually has soup in it too. So I, I, you know, I'd like to do something with Blue Line during this exhibition. If anyone's interested in purchasing one of these, a um, hundred bucks, including priority post, as long as you're in the US, it'll probably be a few bucks more if you're outside the States, but it will be priority post and Blue Line will get, uh, you know, their cut too. So it's supporting the gallery. Of course, it's supporting an artist too, but uh, it's a way to get in and, and have something, a little piece of sculpture, you know, uh, and they're signed and all that jazz. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that, Peter. And yes, yeah. if, if anyone is interested in the Campbell Soup deal, just please reach out to us at gallery at bluelinearts.org or over the phone and we can help walk you through the details of that again. Um, and thanks for the opportunity too, for being so open to it. Of course. And um, I, I do want to say that we will be releasing a um, video walkthrough of the exhibition um, as soon as possible, hopefully by the end of this coming week. Um, but uh, Peter Coombs' piece has a really interesting effect that you can really only catch in person when you're moving from one side of the gallery, one side of the painting to the other. So if you are able to, I really encourage you to see this in person. Oh, and thank you. Can I have one more thing? Sure. Um, there's a subtlety about it. Like, don't try too hard. When you see my work in person, just let it happen. Let it draw you in. And, you know, uh, you know, a hundred people can walk by my work, but if one person gets that little still point that, that takes them out of their every day, it's a little piece of magic. It's a little moment of magic. And the best time to view my work, if you ever happen to own one or whatever, is at the gloaming. Just as the light starts to change in the evening, they come alive. When I'm working at that time, I just, I, I know that I'm doing what I need to be doing because it's very healing, the color, you know? Anyway, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Peter, and congratulations again. Thank you. So um, coming up next, we have our third place award winner, Ellen Babcock with Oracle. Hi, uh, thank you. I am honored and I'm also wanna thank you for such a well-organized submission process. Um, let's see, I never know whether to call these paintings or drawings because they're actually a little bit of both. It's hard to see in this digital image, but uh, you see this watery oval, but an, on closer inspection, there are actually some pencil drawn teeth at the bottom of the oval. And um, I've taken up this practice of trying to combine abstraction and figuration. Um, well, first it just happened spontaneously and I'd make these watery gestures and then I just had this impulse to, to add this figurative element to it. And I realized that it parallels um, a kind, I guess you would call it either a philosophical exploration or a spiritual practice of thinking about the paradox of humanness existing both in the moment. We exist in, as beings uh, animated by life force in the moment, but our minds are also in the future and the past. And bringing together abstraction and figuration is a way for me to kind of honor that paradox and to find moments of beauty in it. So that's it, thanks. Thank you so much, Ellen, and uh, congratulations again. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our second place award winner, Elizabeth McKinney, Variations. Elizabeth, would you uh, care to um, say a few words? No. Oh, I think she's on mute. Yeah. How's that? There we go. There you yeah. Go. Okay. That's better. Um, thank you so much for this. I, I'm really excited to be part of the show with so many great artists. Um, 
I work primarily with gouache and crayon on paper. And I've always liked the directness and the immediacy of drawing. Um, but my work is sort of a hybrid of drawing and painting, like Ellen was speaking of about her work. Um, I work in a call and response manner without a preconception of the end result. I have a background as a dancer and I see the forms that I create um, moving and floating uh, as a reflection of that kinetic experience. And in my studio, I have a collection of objects um, like dried seed pods and branches and nests and wood and vines. And that's my inspiration. And um, I paint these natural objects and flowers, not to represent themselves, but to take me somewhere else to evoke a feeling or a sense of memory. And I like to explore what is ephemeral, um, what is ephemeral beauty, and try to emphasize what is essential. Yeah, wonderful insights. I think um, for, for your piece, it really captures a lot of the elements that tie a, a good portion of the show together, um, especially with the, the bright colors and the, the liveliness of um, your drawings. Thank you. Um, so congratulations again, Elizabeth. Thank and you so much. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to announce our first place juried prize award winner, Thomas Frontini, Garage Band, Oil on Panel. Thomas, would you care to say a few words? Let's see here. Oh, I don't know if Thomas is on mute or. Oh, um, I'm not seeing him in here actually. Okay. I think uh, Thomas might have uh, not been able to join us today. Yeah, I think he has exited if he was here originally. Um, okay, well, anyways, thank you uh, for participating, Thomas. And uh, sorry, he can't be here today, but uh, it really is a lovely piece. Um, surrealist, fun, poppy colors. Um, I highly encourage you to just spend some time looking at the details that really um, start to manifest after you spend a few minutes with this piece. And uh, I'd like to, again, just thank our juror one more time. Carrie Letter had a really tough job ahead of her. I have thousands of submissions to choose from and um, about 150 artists accepted. Um, I'm glad we were not in the place of having to make the tough, tough decisions for um, the Jury Prize Award winners. Um, very good art throughout the show. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Mary Tess. Great, thank you. Congratulations again to all of the artists. Now it is time to move along to the Crocker Art Museum selections. Uh, we were honored to have the um, curator team from the Crocker Art Museum uh, visit the show on the first day of opening um, to select the five works of art that will be on display at the museum following the show, February 28th through May 9th. Um, so now here to announce the um, selections, um, I will hand it back over to um, co-president of Kingsley Art Club, Nancy Lawrence. Oh, Nancy, you're on mute. You'd think I'd get used to it by this time. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, we were there on the day that uh, Scott Shields and the curator team from the Crocker made their selections and they spent a lot of time debating and selecting and going back and forth and it was interesting to watch that process. I can't imagine what Carrie did when she had so many submissions to go through. Um, but the first one is uh, David Avery, from whom we have already heard, interestingly enough, they chose the frailty of realization. David is one person who had two pieces in the show. David was here. Would you like to talk about the piece, David? Sure. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, I guess I'll just give a general kind of idea. Uh, as a pre 
practitioner of uh, traditional black and white etching in San Francisco for yikes, almost 40 years. Uh, I've been drawn to the works and techniques of the master etchers and engravers of the past 400 years and often find in them inspiration or a point of departure for my own work, uh, a bridge between past thought and contemporary issues that sheds light in a unique way on such concerns. Uh, is it small in scale? Well, yes, just as a keyhole is until you put your eye to it and see what is hidden behind the door. Uh, there you will find all kinds of influences ranging from Albrecht Durer, especially in this piece, <laughs> and Francis Rabelais to the Brothers Quay and Max Klinger, among many, many others. So thank you again. I really appreciate it. Ah, thank you, David. Right. The next piece chosen for, by the museum, you've already heard from him, Peter Kuhn, Blue Bell, is going to be exhibited at the Crocker. I don't know, David. Uh, He's disappeared. Peter has disappeared for the moment. He's already he, spoken to us about the piece. There he is. He was on mute, but he's connected. Thank now. you. Thank you okay. very much. I'm very, very honored. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm kind of shocked, but thank you. Thank you very, yes. very much. Okay. Um, then number nine by Marissa White. Oh, all right. I didn't know this was number nine. Marissa? Are you with us? Yeah, I am. This is a huge surprise. I was certain when after I looked at every one of the other art pieces on your website that I was not anywhere near close to being in the running to getting to the Crocker Museum. So thank you guys so very much. Um, just to tell you a little bit about this piece, um, this is part of my um, Certain These Clouds Go Somewhere series. Um, it's digital manipulation photography. Uh, the top of this piece is actually, or the, the background is really photographed at the top of our 14,000 foot mountain that sits outside here in Colorado Springs, Pikes Peak. And then the rest of it was photographed in my, my office studio space. Um, but I often say that I use surrealism really to hyperbolize emotions that are not so easily expressed with words. And the, this particular series really is more of a kind of an exploration about spirituality. And uh, number nine kind of speaks to cloud nine. And in this sense, it is absolutely about happiness, but about finding one's purpose and really being in that moment and finding that, that zone, if you will, where all time stands still. And I try to achieve to get to that point as often as I can. But thank you guys so very much. Huge honor. You're welcome, congratulations. Yes. Very interesting with the girl with her head in the clouds, yes. Um, then the next uh, piece to be shown at the Crocker, the downward blob. I think it's been referred to differently. The, the bean, Nate Disler and Laura uh, Konecki, Konechny, I don't know, Konesny. Is that C hard or soft? I don't know. Anyway, do we have somebody? Is, Hi, we're here. Hi. here. Okay. Here we are. Let me just find my note here. All right. Yeah, so um, thank you so much. Uh, great honor to be selected for the, uh, the Crocker Kingsley Museum Show. Um, so I'll just be brief here, but um, our collaborative ceramic sculpture has combined the sense of design and aesthetics present in each of our individual studio practices. Um, the amorphous blobs found in both the form and the surface are used to express the philosophical philosophical idea of the individual as being perpetually unresolved and in a fluid state of growth and change. We aim to deliver something seemingly familiar yet also foreign by creating loose interpretations of landscapes and working from a visual language reminiscent of beans, points, drips, and pill shapes. Uh. Okay. And so we're just thrilled to be selected for the nice. show. So thanks yeah. everyone. All right, and it has a prominent place right inside, well, right inside the door. Yes, thank you. And then Flower Child by Sue Bradford. Oh, the flower child, the dress. Where's Hi, Sue? everyone. Um, there you are. Um, I'm definitely honored to be an exhibit and uh, this was very unexpected. Um, recognition, it's a little overwhelming to be honest. Um, so I wanted to thank everyone who was involved in the show. It certainly was a um, big feat to get it off the ground and installed and open to people for sure. Um, 
So uh, I'm Sue Bradford. I'm a Northern California artist. Um, and this piece is a um, colograph of a child's dress uh, on pages from a botany book that I've stitched along the exposed seams of the dress and certain illustrations of the flowers. And um, I'm working with the idea that, you know, every day leaves us with a series of impressions, you know, marks and traces. And, you know, the seams in clothing, the lines of stitching and depressions on paper all leave marks behind and that following those tracings and colorings um, allow me to tell imagined stories and reveal maps or trails that um, we can kind of traverse and um, follow a timeline of experience. Um, so this piece is um, looking at the relationship between the qualities of flowers that are ascribed to the qualities of women. Um, flowers relate to traditional feminine, feminine ideals, the sweetness, the prettiness, the daintiness, and the fragility. And um, so playing with those lexicons of language um, that are used to describe women um, are a theme in my work and, and playing with them as a, a question of, you know, is this something I ascribe to? Um, is it still relevant? Um, and or, you know, what are those other structures that are, you know, formed around us and inform our existence? Um, so yeah, this is a way I muddle through those concepts and try and shine a light on those relationships, um, the social structures and uh, hierarchies. Well, Thank you so much. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. And those are the five pieces that will be traveling to the museum. And hopefully we, we, the museum will be open so that people can see them there. You know, we'll, we'll hope. Mm -hmm. Keep our fingers crossed. All right. Yes. Brooke, Mary Tess. Yes. So once again, congratulations to all of the award winners, honorable mentions, and Crocker selections, and to um, all of the other artists who were able to have their work in this show. We had over 1,700 different art submissions. The juror really had her work cut out for her, um, but we are absolutely um, thrilled with the show, and um, we hope that um, you are able to see it in person. Um, it will be up in the gallery through February 20th. Um, and we do still have our um, regular gallery hours um, from Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to five. Um, we encourage for people who are bringing in groups of um, five to 10 to please schedule an appointment with us. But, um, and um, towards the end of the show, we will be announcing a People's Choice Award winner as well. So. Um, Brooke will be dropping another link into um, the chat here with, um, with that, but we will be announcing that at the end of the show. Um, I also want to remind everyone that all of the work um, in this show is also available to um, browse and purchase through our website, bluelinearts.org. Um, we're also happy to have a, a nice selection of prints available for purchase too, um, both at the gallery and through our online store. So um, thank you all so much. And um, I see lots of congratulations in our chat. Thank you all so much for showing your support for everyone, um, for all the different artists. Oh, and friendly reminder too, we do have um, catalogs that um, will be arriving at the gallery soon, um, but you can purchase yours through uh, bluelinearts.org. And we will have a nice little insert with the, um, the Crocker selections and award winners in there as well. So I wish we were all in the same room together and can clap for all of the artists, but um, thank you all so much for joining us for this virtual reception today. And um, we hope to see more of you soon, but thank you all so much. Uh, thank you. <laughs> all right. We'll clap. Mm -hmm. I am just loving the energy in the chat. There's just like so much positivity. I love seeing everyone that we can't see in person right now, but um, thank you guys for your, um, your hard work and your artwork inspires us at work every single day.
It does. Yes. And congratulations to everyone who has um, sold artwork too. We were very um, pleasantly surprised to see we have over 10 works sell in the first week of the show. So thank you so much for supporting these very, very talented artists. Good.